Hello everyone, welcome to another session under the Manda Learn webinar series and today we will talk about a very interesting topic and this is about cybercrime law. And uh, today we have our own legal officer, Attorney Maria Bernice Darin Aberin, to give us some information on cybercrime law. Hello, Attorney. Hello, JD. Hello, everyone. Thank you po sa pag-join sa aking session today. So I will be discussing cybercrime law. Mag-start na ba ako, JD? Yes. Okay, so ipopull up ko lang po yung PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So, I will be You should um attorney. Yes. You should uh, change the layout of our screen. Go to uh, layout number 6. There. Okay, so let's start. Um, I will be discussing Cybercrime Prevention Act or Public Act number 10175. And I will only focus on um, certain or some salient points of this law, which are, uh, I think, relatable and very applicable, especially nowadays na nandito tayo sa we are under ECQ. Okay. So every time na magsa-start ako mag-discuss uh, about um, certain law, I always share it, share um, with my audience na dapat they have to learn or to know by heart the intention of the law. Why? Because um, alam ko naman na uh, not all of us are uh, members of the legal profession and not familiar with some legal terms. So if you know the intention of the law, uh, in case of doubt, you will never go wrong in applying uh, what to apply or how to apply the said provisions. Okay, so let's start. So what is the intention of this law? Number one. The state recognizes the vital role of information and communications industries such as content, production, telecommunications, broadcasting, electronic commerce, and data processing in the nation's overall social and economic development. Okay, so alam naman natin, no, no, we have this uh, revised penal code which is um, of old age already. And sabi nga nila, our legal system and our laws must keep abreast of the continuous development or innovation of the world we live in. So in this era of technology, um, our lawmakers was a, were able to uh, enact a law, the cybercrime law, to be able to reach or to cover more potential uh, nowadays using technology may reach more numbers of uh, of possible victims and may and might create more um, grave uh, violations or damage okay so the state also promotes or provide or, or recognize providing an environment conducive to the development and acceleration Rational application and exploitation of ICT, the information communication technology, to attain free access and intelligible access to exchange and, and or delivery of information. And most especially, the need to protect and safeguard the integrity of computer communication systems, networks, database, and, confidence, and the confidentiality of such integrity and, and availability of the information, data restored therein from all forms of abuse, misuse, and illegal access. So, since inevitable na nga yung pag-use ng technology nowadays, in fact, it is long been considered as one of the basic necessities kasi hindi lang sa professional um, work, hindi lang sa work, pati sa daily living natin, di ba, gamit na natin yung internet, most especially social media. So, we have to create 
some safeguards in using the same dahil free for all talaga ang ang internet and alam natin yan and one of such ways na to safeguard it, it to, is to enact this kind of law okay to protect also the the rights of the people kasi sabi nga nila if you're giving too much freedom to the people it might open doors for abuse okay so, if you know the intention of the law, kahit hindi nyo alam kung ano yung i-apply nyo na batas, ah, kahit hindi nyo alam kung ano i-apply nyo na provision, you will always know the purpose no, of this law in order for you to finally, in order for you to um, to determine kung saan ba yung, yung, yung part na nag na may mali ka may mali ka doon sa pinost mo or may mali ka doon sa shinere mo okay so what are the acts punishable under cybercrime law okay so i will i will only be discussing some or few acts punishable dahil ito lang yung nakikita ko mga relatable and applicable no during ECQ and very prevalent sa sa news today na marami nang napapanish under these provisions. So first, let's go to computer-related identity theft. What is computer-related identity theft under the law? It is described as an authorized acquisition, use, misuse, transfer, possession, alteration, or deletion of identifying information belonging to another whether natural or juridical. So, relate na relate tayo dito kasi marami talaga nag identity theft. Ito yung um, well-known term na posers, di ba? Yung mga hackers, di ba? Yung, they use the identity of a certain personality in the internet in order to solicit, no? Sometimes, or more, more often than not, for the purpose of um, gaining... Uh, with the intent to gain, okay? So, yung iba uh, with intent to influence, okay? Another crime is the cyber sex. Okay, according to some news, um, there is an increase or significant increase in the numbers of um, sexual offenders or those that are victims of um, domestic violence, um, sexual sexual abuse, especially dun sa mga bata, lalo na kapag ka under uh, under this under calamities, no? In this in this case, sa atin since ECQ, ang lahat ng tao ay nasa loob ng bahay, so uh, nirecognize din yan ng ating mga um, watch uh, mga mga uh, different um, organizations no na tinitingnan nila or monitor nila yung mga cases na ganito so what is cybersex it is a willful engagement maintenance control or operation directly or indirectly of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of a computer system for favor or consideration again using the computer or using the technology that we have there is a discussion on this matter if it involves couples or people in a relationship who engage in cyber sex for as long as it is not done for favor or consideration i don't think it will be covered however if one party or in a couple or relationship sues, sues claiming to be forced to do cyber sex then it can be covered so Makita naman natin um ang pinaka driving point here is the ang pinaka importante is you you're doing this for favor or consideration what kind of favor so yung iba minsan nagre-resort to um monetary most of the time puro sa puro for for the purpose of um for income no which is very uh very raw and very immoral. And sometimes, hindi lang yung sarili nila yung sinasubject nila in this kind of practices. Even their their um, their spouses, their relatives, and children. 
Okay, so yan yung mga binabantayan ngayong mga times na ganito, unusual times or calamities like this one. So, next. Sharing of fake news. Ito, very relatable din to. So, ang tanong, attorney, um, nasaan ba sa cybercrime law yung specific provision defining sharing fake news? Kasi if you will access the internet, no, if you will if you will review full text the the cybercrime prevention act, you will not see or you will not you will you may observe na there there is no specific um statement there um describe res- describing fake news. Sabi ko nga no, um we have before the cybercrime law, no, we have we already have our revised penal code which is of old age, of old age already. Kaya nagke-create nga tayo ng bagong mga batas na magko-cover ng 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 different acts from the revised penal code using different methods. In this case, yung technology. Okay. So what is uh what is sharing fake news under under the revised penal code? Under Article 154 of the revised penal code, it is called unlawful use of means of publication and unlawful utterances. It is described describe as an act in which any person who by means of printing, lithography, or any other means of publication shall publish or cause to be published as news, any false news which may endanger the public order or cause damage to the interest or credit of the state. So kung titignan nyo, ba, under the revised penal code, published as a news. So noon, since old age na nga yung revised penal code natin, what are the forms of publishing fake news? Sa, uh, it may be a, in, 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 in the use of um, uh, television, uh, newspapers, articles, no? Lahat mga written, mga ganon. Or, um, radios, di ba? Pero since nagkaroon nga tayo ng Cybercrime Act, nakukover na rin yung, pag, yung pag-share ng mga unlawful publication na ito using technology or using social media. So nasaan nga, Torni? Bakit kung magpo-post ako ng fake news, bakit ako ma, bakit ako ma, pa, mapapunish or mapapenalize under Cybercrime Law and not the Revised Penal Code? Eh wala naman sa wala naman sa Cyber Crime Prevention Act na nakalagay na it is wrong to share fake news in using social media or using technology. But let me share with you under the Cyber Cyber Crime Prevention Act Section 6, no take note of this, all crimes defined and penalized by the revised penal code as amended and special laws if committed by, through, and with the use of information and communication technology shall be covered by the relevant provision of this act provided that the penalty be, to be imposed shall be one degree higher than that provided for the revised penal code by the revised penal code as amended and special laws as the case may be. So malinaw, diba? Uh, it is described specifically under the revised penal code and dahil may cybercrime, pinalawak niya yung coverage. So there are crimes, in short, or in other words, there are crimes under the revised penal code which are specifically described that is now covered by Cyber Cybercrime Prevention Act if done through or with the use of information and communication technologies. So yung mga acts... Um, describe or punishable under the revised penal code if done or with the use of communi- if done with the use of communication technologies sigurado under cyber crime prevention act siya uh, magpo-fall okay so what are uh, uh, what are this kind of um um uh uh what what uh, what are uh, the other acts that are described under the revised penal code that is now covered under Cybercrime Prevention Act. So, ito. 
Ito yung very prevalent ngayon. Uh, before that, okay, let me share with you ito yung mga samples ng fake news. Okay? So, have you heard of this uh, Rappler article, no? Nakalagay si Bu, film writer and business owner Maria Victoria Beltran was arrested after 12.30 related to Citro Zapera. Her legal counsel, Vincent Ailes, confirmed the text message. So, kung may kita nyo, um, yung, yung batas natin, I, I'm not, this, this is not an example of fake news, okay? This is an example of uh, a person penalized under, uh, under Cyber Crime Prevention Act. So, kung makikita nyo, di ba, um, during the, before ECQ, parang hindi natin nababalitaan na mayroong mga napipenalize on cyber crime. So, ngayon, since, um, since nakafocus nga lahat ng tao sa internet dahil hindi makalabas, yung mga watchdog natin, yung mga uh, implementers or law enforcement natin, nakatutok sila sa mga violators. So, ito yung nasampolan si si ano si si, si Bu film writer business owner kasi he posted allegedly a not uh, not reliable um uh, reliable news or article about certain person okay eto before the ECQ na extension no na inannounce kanina ni ni president Nagka, kumalat din to sa social media, sa messenger. Itong audio clip na allegedly bo- voice daw ni Jessica Soho. So, the, it is um, it is specifically warning, uh, making uh, making warn, uh, warning the people to uh, to to stock up um, goods or supplies dahil nga magkakaroon daw ng total lockdown which is very uh ang tawag dito and uh not helpful in this in the in the midst of this crisis dahil yung ibang mga uh, gullible na persons na maniniwala no they might go out and hoard diba so yung social distancing natin mabobiolate na naman kasi magsisiksikan sila dun sa 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 mga markets kasi naniwala sila dito sa audio clip na ito. Okay. So, uh, going back, yung sinabi ko kanina na what are other uh, crimes that are that is defined in the revised penal code which are, which are now or which is now covered under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. So, one of this, no, is cyber libel. Ito, very ano din to, prevalent din to ngayon dahil since we are all lock, uh, locked up here in our home, most of us are very dependent on social media kasi it kills time, it it, it, it entertains us, di ba? Yung boredom natin, nawawala kapag nakatutok tayo sa social media. And the tendency is um, we share or we comment on certain articles or certain persons post without uh without even thinking kung ito ba ay uh, constructive criticisms or it will go beyond no the beyond the beyond, beyond constructive criticism which may be considered as a libelous statement so what is cyber libel according to the law the cyber crime prevention act According to the Revised Penal Code, again, it as defined under the Revised Penal Code, a libel is a public and malicious imputation of a crime or of a, or, or of a vice or defect, real or imaginary, or any act, omission, condition, status, or cir- circumstance dis- tending to cause the dishonor, discredit, or contempt of a natural or juridical person or to blacken the memory of one who is dead. So in, in another article, libel are the allegations of discreditable act or condition concerning another publication, another publication of charge, identity of the person defamed, and existence of and the existence of malice. Excuse me. 
Okay. According to the case of Manila Bulletin Publishing Corporation and Router and Router Batigas versus Victoria Domingo and the People of the Philippines, GR number one seven zero three four. You can look this up in the internet. Cyber libel is defined as as libel is defined as every false imputation is deemed malicious. Nevertheless, when the discreditable imputation is directed against a public person in his public capacity, it is not necessarily actionable. In order that such discreditable imputation to a public official may be actionable, it, may, it must either be a false allegation of fact or a comment based on a false supposition. If the comment is an expression of opinion based on established facts, then it is immaterial that the opinion happens to be mistaken as long as it might reasonably be inferred from the facts. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, for every false imputation, there is a presumption that you have done it maliciously. Meaning, uh, the person um, violating or committing libel is the burden of proof. No, if If he or she is raising a defense of um, good faith, no? He has the burden of proof to 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 uh, to dispute that that presumption that it is done not maliciously. Kaya lang sabi nga for every false imputation, it is deemed malicious. So that's the default. No, yung yung mga false imputation natin sa mga tao naka 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 nakaintak agad doon yung presumption of malish uh, that that is done in a malicious manner or in a malicious intention so when in when when, when in terms of um if the subject of the the imputation or the subject of the statement is a public person and we, we all know no since most of us no yung mga nag, nanonood sa akin are public officials or public employees as long as the 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 statement is um, in connection with our public duties or in the performance of our duty. I don't think there is a, a violation of libel. Uh, there is the, 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 it can be considered as libel for as long as it will not be a personal attack or not in a manner that uh, you will. Um, you will discredit the reputation, no? So, ang pinaka-safe dito is, uh, kung public officials yung, yung tina-target sa iyong post, ang pinaka-safe dito is, establish your facts, uh, um, gather your facts, and make sure that those facts that you are sharing are established facts, no? Meaning, kung established facts, totoo, no? And then, write up, Put some of your observation on the certain acts that, that the, the the public official is doing, and then uh, give your cri uh, constructive opinion or constructive criticism, and never go or never attack the person or never give a personal attack. Okay. So, what um attorney ang tanong? Paano ba siya nagiging Construct, paano ba siya nako-considered na constructive criticism or pa paano siya nag-go beyond the constructive criticism and might be considered as a libelous statement? So, mamaya i-discuss ko yun, no? I will give an example. So, i-discuss muna natin yung cyber libel and its elements para mas maintindihan nyo. So, there are three elements of cyber libel. Number one, the allegation must be malicious. A malicious imputation of a crime or of a vice, defect, real or imaginary, or any act, omission, condition, status, or circumstance tending to cause the dishonor, discredit, or contempt of a natural, juridical, or to blacken the memory of one who is dead. Number two, it must be published. So when you say it is, it must be published, it, the allegation must be made publicly through the use of information and communication technologies then number and then the last one it is not necessary that the person is defamed 
that, that the person defame his name. If the totality of the publication make it makes it possible to determine who the defamed person is, then this element is also satisfied. So again, um, medyo maghunos dili tayo no, sa mga pagpaparinig natin kasi sabi nga dito, if, it, if the totality of the publication makes it possible to determine, like for example, hindi nyo nga pinangalanan pero dinescribe nyo naman kung sino siya, position, and uh, position in the government, or our position sa, uh, sa, sa work, di ba? Tapos dinescribe nyo pa yung yung ano niya, yung physical ano niya, attributes niya, then um, uh, it, it might fall to cyber libel. So ito yung, uh, I will give you an example. What is constructive criticism in libelous comments? Again, okay, um, this is just uh, my example. Okay, I, I, I did not get it from any other source in the internet. So, for example, in this uh, picture, okay? So, credit to Google image, di ba? Okay. So, hindi ko kilala yan, okay? I, ju I, I just make use of this picture na nakita ko sa Google and makes, make a statement out of it, okay? So just so I can show kung alin yung constructive criticism and libelous comments. So, first statement. In the midst of this crisis, we need all the help we can get to at least lessen the burden of our fellow men. However, for me, there is no need to publicize everything. Helping is still meaningful even if done in silence. So for example, ako nakita ko yung post na to, shinare ko. Tapos ito yung statement ko. Diba? Again, in the midst of this crisis, nagpost ako sa, nagpost ako kunwari sa social media. In the midst of this crisis, we need all the help we can get to at least lessen the burden of our fellow men. However, for me, there's no need to publicize everything. Helping is still meaningful, even if done in silence. Versus, sample. Nagpost ulit ako. Ito na yung post ko. Helping is never wrong, but doing it without good intention and only for public pub for publicity is unacceptable. I'm doubtful of this kind of help you are doing, knowing that there are rumors around, rumors around, sorry, knowing that there are rumors around that your families engage in illegal business such as drugs. If you think your illegal acts will be forgiven by replacing it with this doubtful help, you are probably dreaming. So kung may kita niyo yung dalawang uh, statement, no. Yung una, I'm just describing what I saw in the picture and just uh, inserting my opinion that you can help without making it public. As against or as opposed to the the second statement na nilagyan ko pa siya ng wala siyang good intention, um pub for publicity lang, tapos inatako pa yung personal ano niya na na mayroong mga balita na their family is engaged in drugs and whatever and then uh, there are not their acts are not forgiven kumbaga parang the, i am in a way discrediting no not only uh, him but also his family by by just looking at that picture by just sharing at that picture okay so yung num yung first statement pwede safe siya constructive criticism Kasi inobserve mo lang naman kung ano yung nasa picture and then you just insert your your opinion, di ba? You're, you're just establishing, a fa you're just uh, sharing or narrating established facts. But dun sa pangalawa, parang unnecessary na yung mga comments na attacking it person, attacking the family or the person in the picture personally, no? Or yung mga vices niya, which is false. Or kung hindi man false, well, hindi naman reliable yung ating sources. Okay, another uh, example of cyber libel. Number one, ah, uh, ito, uh, yung recently na nag, na nag um, viral, no? Na yung picture niya, which was taken, I think, hindi during this ECQ, eh, parang before the EC, before pa, pero uh, the, the, the countries or the province where 
where this uh, person is living eh, under calamity din and nakapila yata siya niyan sa sa relief goods din and then he was shocked yata by some some uh, a statement of the barangay captain I, I, I I'm not sure no pero napanood ko to no and then in explain niya nga ang 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 mali is um the people are not aware no they, they, they don't have the intention to discredit this person ang gusto lang nila is to make a humor out of it di ba gawan siya ng meme para nakakatawa para nakaka-entertain naman kasi nakaka-bored na yung boring na talaga yung ECQ so shinear nila tapos nilagyan nila ng ano statement di ba and yung pinaka worst na na ginawa is yung ginawa, ginamit yung picture na to and putting a caption that hindi yata dapat sa DSWD ah, parang parang hindi pala siya sa DSWD nakas nakalista kundi sa tokang list of tokang or alam naman natin tokang yung mga um, watch list de ba ng government na related sa drugs so parang it, it is really in the form of cyber libel dahil una-una, uh, you discredit the person. Again, hindi nga siya named eh, di ba? Kasi wala nga nakaka, nakaka, nakakakilala sa kanya. But then, since it has become, became viral, no? Eventually, na-determine din. Dahil nga yung picture niya, very, very viral na all over the internet. So, ang, ang mali dun is, uh, by by tagging him as not being in the list of the of DSWD but instead in the list of a watch list for drug related cases na didis na discredit siya so some people might think na pang na uh, isa siya dun sa uh, that that he or his family is related to drugs so we let's be very careful no i know we we all we do, we do sometimes you don't have the intention to discredit or to to cause damage to to other people it's just that we have we sometimes want to make fun of something no in the middle of this uh, depressing times okay so again um i discussed three no uh, i discussed um sir, sir uh, i discussed some uh some provisions or acts punishable under cyber crime law cyber sex um identity theft no and let me just uh add no meron din palang meron din palang under cyber crime na um uh, provision against uh, against acts that uh uh, yung sa mga hacking, sa mga phishing, and alam natin ngayon na there are there are uh, uh, significant increase in the numbers of the victims, no? Dun sa mga na hahak yung mga accounts nila, yung hahak yung credit uh, card um, information nila, and cost the and the some has already cost uh, lost uh, thousands of pesos or millions and na panood ko nga sa news na uh, marami rin mga teachers na nagiging victims nito. So, yun nga, let's be very careful dun sa mga transactions natin online kasi since easy yung nga, nakadepend tayo sa internet. So, some of us, no, nag-shopee, nag-lalasada, or, nag, or any other um uh, a uh, website na nagsha-shopping tayo or bumibili tayo or we purchase of course some some of us are are um uh, availing of this uh, uh deliveries no yung mga food deliveries yung mga grocery deliveries kasi ayaw nga natin lumabas so let's be very careful in giving the information dun sa mga sellers na yan kasi very prevalent talaga ang phishing nowadays and it is punishable under cyber crime prevention act so, um, uh, uh, let me recall, uh, let us just recall, no, uh, cyber sex, uh, identity theft using cyber, using, um, information technology, uh, 
hacking, cyber crime, uh, cy- cyber libel, and sharing of fake news. Or these are some of the acts. Marami pang acts described doon, pero those were very technical and um, applicable siya talaga sa mga IT professionals. Yun talaga mga magagaling sa information technology. So, bago natin, uh, bago ko i-end up tong aking uh, presentation, let me just share with you this quote. This pandemic has changed me, or has changed every one of us. It's changed our perspective. It caused us to understand the importance of things that used to seem insignificant, like breathing, a walk, a hug, a, small, a smile, a small talk. It caused me to rethink how I live my life or how we live our life. I gave It gave me or us an opportunity to rediscover the value of being grateful in things. So, alam natin na nakaka, makakaboryo na talaga tong ECQ. But uh, let us all be responsible in our acts and appreciate those little things no, na nasa bahay lalong-lalo na yung pamilya natin during this ECQ. Let's take advantage of this, not just taking advantage of the internet and use it in, in use, use it to cause damage or to cause danger to anybody. No? Use it to communicate, use it to constantly uh, connect with your friends and with your family or relatives na malalayo during ECQ. Okay? So thank you very much po sa uh, sa aking discuss uh, sa sa mga nakinig. I hope I, uh, I I was able to share with you and to make you understand some points or um was able to uh, uh to clarify or to make a clear narration of this um salient points. Hello, JD. Alright, so layout number two tayo, attorney. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much for that very um, interesting and um, informative session on cybercrime law. And we have some few questions from our audience. And um, sige, bisahan natin sa question ni... Hanap lang ako ng question at or ni... Okay. Ayan, kay Ma'am Wendell Magbanwa. Pakihanap yung question niya. 4.35 p.m. Wendell? Wendell Magbanwa. Permission po to ask. Okay. I-click mo siya. Ayan. So, ang question ni Ma'am Wendell Magbanwa, permission po to ask, cyber, li- cyber libel din po ba yung intentional comment na hindi po maganda yung words about sa nag-post? So, I think ang tanong niya, kung nag-post si person A ng masama, tapos nag-comment ng hindi maganda si person B, may cyber libel din ba si person B? Hmm. Um, sabi ko nga, di ba kanina, alin ba yung, yung statement na nag-go beyond a, a constructive criticism? And kailan siya nagiging libelous comment? Kasi if, if kung yung subject ng comment mo is, sabi mo nga, libelous na, and then you will comment again na not based on established facts. Kung kinukontra mo lang siya based on your established facts, or based on what you know na alam mo reliable yung source mo, I don't think libelous din yon, no? And sabi ko nga, wag na wag nyo hahaluan ng personal attack. You can always just um, uh, uh, narrate what your observation dun sa post niya or dun sa shinare niya. 
And then just put your comment or opinion na hindi siya nag-a-attack dun sa person, no? Maybe attacking the the article, kung mali yung article, but not the person it na who is sharing then tahaluan mo pa ng mga opinion mo na ay yung sisirain mo pa yung personality niya nako hindi reliable yan hindi ka di ba nga ganito ka hindi, hindi ka nga ganito eh lalo na kung nako yung religion mo nga hindi naniniwala sa ganito yan bawal yan doon siya nagiging libelous okay hindi All siya right. nagiging say. thank you next question tayo kay ma'am Mets Omero sige scroll down mo attorney ano pangalan Si Ma'am Metz Omero, I think Ma'am Metz Omero is from Mandaluyong Elementary School, 4.38 p.m. Ayan. Hi, Attorney Aberin. I would like to ask if there are if there is a prescribed period for online libel or cyber libel after posting it. Okay. Um, sabi ko nga, di ba, yung Cyber Crime Prevention Act, ina-expand lang naman yung coverage ng libel which is already defined under the revised penal code. So yung yung mga prescriptive period natin under the revised penal code which um is applicable to different kind of violations under the revised penal code. Yun din yung mag-apply na prescriptive period. Okay? So wala siyang prescriptive period na nakalagay specifically sa Cybercrime Prevention Act, pero yung prescriptive period for libel is nandun sa revised penal code which is which which you can um access no sa internet and iba-iba yung prescriptive period niyan depending on the penalty imposed kasi yung libel iba-iba din kasi yung penalty imposed eh. may imprisonment may fines may 6 years to to 12 years 12 years to 20 years depending on the gravity of the acts so yung prescriptive period na under the revised penal code will also apply dun sa mga doon sa uh, doon sa acts na uh, na inexpand or um, parang pinalawak ng Cybercrime Prevention Act. Okay. Thank you attorney. So they can just google it no kung ano yung prescri uh, prescription or prescribed period sa libel that yes. also applies cyber libel. Yes. Okay? Ayan, another question tayo from daming question actually attorney um Uh, may question si Ma'am Margie Mahinay, how can we get a copy of your slide? So, actually po, ako na po ang sasagot. Um, bibili po sa akin ni Atorne yung slides niya and then I will just post it in our website na learn.depedmandaluyong.org. Okay, so, hanap pa tayo ng question. Pa, um, ito, kay Ma'am Ronilda Romero, 4.41 p.m. Ronilda. Romero? Or, or, yes. Ronilda. 4.41 p.m. Hindi ko siya makita, friend. Ro, ano ulit? Anong pangalan? Ro, Ronilda Romero. Romero. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, Attorney Byrne. If a post falls for a cyber libel, ano po ang gagawin? Paano po i-address yun? Ano po ang magiging sanction pag napatunayan? Uh, okay. Um, meron na tayo ngayon sa NBI na Cybercrime Division. So, kung meron mga post na ganyan, na you think na violation siya na, or considered a cyber libel, screenshot nyo lang yung photos and then kung ikaw yung nagrereklamo, no, ikaw yung dinis-credit, screenshot mo yon. So since it is a an, an electronic evidence, you have to authenticate it using a or by executing an affidavit, no, of uh, authenticating the said uh, screenshot that is the as uh, declaring that um, it is not uh, declaring it under oath na it is a faithful copy or screenshot of the statement it is not um it is not altered or hindi siya or edited okay 
And then sub just submit your complaints together with that uh, screenshots or copies of those screenshots and your affidavit of authentication and submit it lang sa NBI. I think ngayon meron sila mga online na na paraan pa paano mag ano eh mag magreklamo kasi nga bawal tayong lumabas, di ba? Hindi tayo pwedeng pumunta sa NBI para magreklamo. Okay, yung sanctions naman um again uh the yung libel under revised penal code provides for sanctions. So dito sa Cyber Crime Prevention Act, uh pinalawak niya lang or in-upgrade niya lang yung um by one degree yung mga penalties under the revised penal code. So you can google it sa sa you can google it no yung revised penal code and look for the crime of libel. And then may kita nyo na doon yung mga different penalties and then upgrade it by one degree. So yung one degree mahirap ipaliwanag yan kasi the, 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 the courts, no, sila yung muna compute ng mga penalties na yan. Pero definitely, it's either a fine or imprisonment. Depending right. on the gravity. Thank you, Atoyni. So yung question ni Ma'am Jenny Lee Katulong, yung kasusunod, kasunod ng question, I think pareha lang sila ng question, no? So uh -huh. uh, next na tayo sa question ni, ni Sai Morales. Um, if pwede po magtanong, considered po ba sa computer-related identity theft ang fake accounts? Fake accounts. Yung identity theft kasi, pag sinabi mong identity theft, you are a poser. You are... Um, uh you 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 are pass uh, paano ba? uh you are making the people believe that you are a certain or a specific person kasi kaya nga identity theft eh. you are claiming to be another or claiming to be that kind of person you are portraying so kung fake accounts it might fall to some other uh fraudulent act under cyber crime prevention act pero hindi siya magpo-fall as fake accounts kasi uh, as identity theft kasi kung fake accounts lang yun, tas wala ka naman wala ka naman ginagaya or wala ka namang ninanakawan na identity. So it will not fall into it. It will not be considered as fake as identity theft. But definitely, kung yung fake accounts na ginagamit na yan is for the purpose of you no know, with the intent to gain para magkumita, manloko, then they, it will fall to some other acts under the cybercrime law aside from the identity theft that is specifically provided under the Cybercrime Prevention Act. JD, hindi kita marinig. Okay, another question from Ma'am Liberty Noblesa. If yung fake news na forward sa iba, bawal po ba yun kung di naman alam nag-forward ng fake news? If you if so you pinasa lang naman sa forwards iba bawal po ba yun? Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, 'di ba? Um you have to be uh uh you have to be very vigilant on those things that you post or you share kahit private message 'yan. Kasi sabi ko nga, yun ma, like for example, yung binigay ko nga example kanina na audio, 'di ba? Na nag-circulate hindi man sa news feed nyo pero dun sa mga messengers and GC na nagsasabi warning the people na they will be a lockdown so nag, mag, ang tendency ko maniniwala talaga at may mga tao talaga nanini, maniniwala na gullible na, na might go ba diba? might violate the Bayanihan Act and just go out and hoard diba? yun, yun yung makukos niya na danger so bago tayo mag forward no hindi natin pwedeng sasabihin na hindi natin to chinek. Kasi yung yung intention na yung intention natin will not uh, will not will uh, will not lessen the damage that it might create no when sharing those fake news. Okay, so very vigilant tayo dapat mag mag-research tayo, magtanong muna tayo totoo ba to? Um, ano ba to sino bang nagsulat ng article na to? Yun, ganun. Alright, so thank you. Na, uh, next question tayo kay Ma'am Joanne Magsino. Attorney, bakit, 
ah, may nakita po ako video na naninira sa government natin. Pwede po ba yun makasuhan po? Sabi ko nga, di ba, may mga may jurisprudence akong nilagay kanina. Meron akong Supreme Court um, Supreme Court uh, ruling na sinight kanina stating na kapag public officials ka, you are susceptible to public criticism for as long as the criticism is related to the this uh, to the carrying out of the of their duties or exercise of their duties and function as public officials pero kung personal attack na hindi na yun maganda di ba pero if you are just sharing it na nakikita mo naman sa video like for example yun nga um yung binigay kulang di ba and then you're just describing what you saw and then you're giving an opinion hindi naman personal attack doon sa 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 public official then i think magpo-fall pa rin siya sa constructive criticism and it will not be considered a cyber cyber libel mas malawak ang mas libera- liberal ang application nito pag ang subject mo is public officials kasi we are susceptible diba as public officials our lives are open to the public okay masama mang pakinggan pero talagang susceptible tayo for public criticisms because our clientele are public are the public no we serve the public so they are the ones who will criticize our work okay Next, we have another question from Patricia Jr. Attorney Byrne, ang cyber libel po ba, for example, katrabaho mo, ano pa po muna ang first step? Um, hindi yan, yung isa, yung sa baba, 4.43 p.m. 4.43 p.m. Nasagot na natin siya kanina, yung sa screenshot. Um, ay, um, hindi, yung isa, 4.43 sa taas. 443. Ito ba? Attorney Byrne, yes. Ang cyber libel po ba, for example, katrabaho mo, anong first step na dapat gawin mag-complain? I think si Ma'am Patricia is a public school teacher. Kung katrabaho mo, eh, pwede ka na magpunta talaga sa NBI. No? And then, yun nga, yung sabi ko kanina, um, yung screenshots, yung affidavit, affidavit mo, no, authenticating the those copies na screenshot na it is not altered, it is not edited, and it is a faithful copy of the statement. And then just go to NBI, no? And then alam na meron talaga cybercrime division sa NBI na nag-specifically handling this cybercrime acts, no? Or cybercrime or um violation of cybercrime prevention act. Uh, actually, um, ato yun yung share ko lang. Aside sa NBI, pwede rin silang P, uh, pumunta sa PNP sa may camp crime. Kasi dati may sinamahan ng student na nag-ident, nag, merong um, identity theft. Tapos, inaccommodate kami doon sa PNP Cyber Crime Division. So, meron sila doon um, opisina nag-accommodate. May mga computer sila doon para i-verify kung totoo yung... Parang... Oo, kasi parang women's desk yeah. din yan eh. Meron na rin silang specific ano talaga. Okay, hmm. another question after lang ni Ma'am Patricia kay Ma'am Sharina Santiago. Ato, hindi okay. cyber libel po ba yung kinomen ang family picture at sinabi na sila ang pamilya ng mga chismosa sa lugar, sa lugar nyo? Ano daw? Cyber libel po ba yung kinomen ng family picture? Kinom... Nag-comment siya sa family picture, tama? Hindi. At kinoment sinabi, yung ano? family picture. Tapos, at sinabi? Yung family picture ang kinoment. Tapos may caption ah. na sila ang pamilya na chins... Sorry po. Chismosa sa lugar niyo. Well, I think it might fall, no? It might fall dun sa description ng cyber libel. Kasi it's a form of discrediting, di ba? The person. Lalo na kung hindi naman related yun dun sa issue ng main post. Diba? Basta mailagay mo lang. Kasi mahirap sagutin tong, tong tanong na to kasi hindi kompleto yung facts eh. Diba? Kung maga parang ano ba yung context ng pinag-uusapan. Yun. Pero kung by, by the looks of it, makikita mo talaga na parang parang cyber libel li- din talaga. Kasi parang it's unnecessary na idamay mo pa yung buong pamilya. At, nagko- at 
for sure, yung picture na yun, ginrab mo lang din yun sa Facebook, di ba? Hindi mo naman yun, without any, uh, any consent from the family, na gamitin mo yung picture na yun for comment purposes. So, but, baka hindi lang cybercrime, baka pati Data Privacy Act, eh, ma, ano mo yan, ma-violate. Hindi kita marinig, JT. Ayan, another question kay Sir Marcos Lopez, Marcos Antonio G. Lopez, 4.46 p.m. Hello? At Oh. Ay, Sir Mar Marcos Antonio Lopez, 4.46 p.m. Marcos Antonio Lopez, 4.46. Good PM, can I PM file, according to I file, cybercrime law and libel at the same time. Hindi, kasi yung libel, iba yung mode of ano niya, mode of um, execution niya. Kasi kung makikita mo, di ba, yung libel na nasa revised penal code, Ang nakalagay lang doon, publishing. Meaning, aside, other than using the internet, ginamit, uh, nag, nag commit ka ng libel using other forms, other platforms, like news, uh, newspapers, uh, paano ba, um, articles sa school, articles sa loob ng opisina, uh, mga, uh, sa, sa TV, sa ano, pero, um, actually, yung TV nga, hindi lang ano eh, hindi, hindi na siya, Yung, yung, yung paggamit mo ng technology na rin ng television, cybercrime na rin siya, hindi lang siya sa internet. ba Yung other than, no, if the, if the, li if libelous act is committed other through or with the use of, uh, of any modes other than the internet or information technology, then it is a regular, uh, if, if we will call it regular libel under the revised penal code. But if you are doing or if you are committing libel using uh, the information or advanced technology, then it is now cybercrime law. So cybercrime ka lang kapag gumamit ka ng, ng mga, ganyan, mga development na ganyan, ng mga technologies na ganyan. Pag simple libel lang, yung, yung, yan, yan, yung nag-publish ka sa mga books, mga ganyan, sa mga newspapers, and then yun, doon ka sa revised penal code. Hindi ka na sa special eh. Alright. So, um, I think some of the questions have been already answered by attorney kanina. Kasi, for example, may question dito, if are we liable if we've rewarded fake news? So, nasagot mo siya kanina. Tapos, may tanong din na if pwedeng gamitin as evidence as screenshot, nasagot na rin siya kanina. So, you can just replay this video later on. Um, so I think um, wala. Itong merong question dito na if yung downloading belongs to the scope of cybercrime law, si Sir Marcos ulit, 4.53 p.m. Downloading. I think last question na sana natin to. Downloading, ayan. Does downloading belongs to the scope of cybercrime law if the contents downloaded were already old, like old movie songs? I think sa optical media at ato, no? Yung um, piracy. At saka, oo, at saka, friend, depende kasi kung saan mo gagamitin yan. Eh. For siguro, yung, may mga, ano kasi yan eh, um, magpo-fall din to sa Intellectual Property Act, no? Yes. Intellectual yes, so. Property Law. Kasi yung mga music, mga ganyan, mga, mga art, 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 ganyan. Mga copyright yan, copyrights yan. So, sabi nga nila, yung fair use, no? the principle of fair use, if you are using it for, uh, not to, not with, without the intent to gain, or you, you're just using it for the purpose of intellectual discussion, like for example, gagamitin mo sa school, pag mag-meditate kayo habang, ka nag habang bago ka mag-ano, di ba, yung parang mag-prayer, prayer ka, bago ka mag- Mag, mag discuss or magturo then i think hindi naman siya mag mag violate na kahit na anong do pero pag may intent to gain and you pass upon you and you pass it to the public and claiming it to be yours then hindi hindi siya sa cyber crime pero baka doon siya sa in, up, sa intellectual property all right so yes so pwede copyright. mo na pwede mo na ulit i-click yung question ni Sir Marcos para mawala siya sa screen 
Ihaid mo siya. And, um, and I think that's it. So we have answered the majority of the questions. Attorney, thank you so much. Do you have any one piece of advice na related to cybercrime para sa mga viewers natin? Yung importante nilang mga. Okay. Uh, ang advice ko lang talaga, alam ko na uh, this is really an unusual time. And alam ko na we are all bored at, di ba, in our home, lock up in our home. And we are all very dependent sa social media, di ba? Eh, hindi yan maiiwasan, no? Kasi it, it is our scapegoat, eh, no, during these times of crisis. Pero let's be responsible, lalo na yung mga sinishare natin kasi it might cause panic, di ba? It might cause discredit to other people. And yun nga, yung, di ba, yung old uh, saying na click bef- uh, think before we click. And very applicable yan ngayon, ngayong ECQ. Yun lang, JD. Okay, so thank you so much po sa lahat ng mga viewers natin and um, maraming din salamat attorney Bernice Abirin for accommodating all uh, our questions na galing din sa audience. So with that, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye.